Hey everybody, this is MJ and welcome to our Thursday training broadcast. I hope you've had a phenomenal week so far and that if you are looking forward to the weekend or living for the weekend that you have enough juice to make it through tomorrow to the finish line. But today we're going to be talking about something else you can put in your arsenal so that you will not have to continue living for the weekend because that is no kind of existence, right? You work all week, you, you dread Mondays on Sunday night, and then you drag yourself to the week. Wednesday is hump day, and then you downhill slide to the weekend, and the cycle goes over and over again. And it doesn't ever end until you, what, hit retirement, or maybe you don't ever hit retirement, right? So we are trying to get you prepared so that you can launch your dream boutique so that you will be prepared to no longer have to live for the weekend, no longer have to do the dread Mondays, live for Fridays cycle into infinity, but rather you will be in control of your time and your ability to create the lifestyle that you want to for you and your family. So that's why we are here. Today, specifically, we're going to be talking about online stores versus retail stores, specifically have storefronts, meaning physical stores where you can go in and buy things, become the dinosaurs of retail. Because as we know, you know, if you have been alive and, and aware any amount of time, online sales is booming. And it's not just because of COVID, even though the pandemic and the quarantine gave it a huge, huge shot in the arm. E-commerce was already a ginormous trend in retailing for a lot of years preceding COVID-19. So, you know, it was a day when you had to go into a physical store or maybe mailed away. If, if you're old enough to remember mail order catalogs and things of that nature, maybe you remember when you could write away or even call a number to order something, maybe from the Sears or JCPenney catalog. But for the most part, if you wanted to buy something, you had to physically go and get it at a store. Now you don't have to do that. You can actually go online and have a relatively safe and hassle-free experience. Um, and with COVID-19, with the pandemic and the quarantine where everybody was stuck at home, there was an additional 105 billion with a B more sales um, online in 2020 than for the year from the year before. A 32.4% increase year over year from 2019 to 2020. That is an extraordinary figure. Online sales increased 39% year over year in the first quarter of this year, which is nearly three times the 14% increase in the first quarter of last year when the pandemic was just getting started. Um, and so everything has been growing exponentially online. And so it can make you as a, as a boutique owner or a future boutique owner think that the best place for you to put your business is online. And I will say that the majority or really any business that I consider being serious about doing business has some type of online presence, whether you can order online or at least go to their Facebook page or their website to find out their hours and things of that nature. You have to be online today to be able to sell. You have to have some type of presence or people think you're not in business. But this pandemic and this quarantine has made it to where stores where you could not before order online very efficiently or order by phone and pick it up and all those things, they have had to pivot very quickly to be able to accommodate those ways of selling or they weren't going to be able to open. Um, and so what it has created is what I call this hybrid approach to a physical store and an online store. A lot of stores, uh, places that normally you would have gone into just to shop physically, or maybe they had a bit of an online presence. Now their online selling is a majority or a huge part of what they're doing, but they are still leveraging their physical stores for you to be able to pick up same day. See, quarantine and, and, and the pandemic did increase online sales, but that didn't mean everything got sent through the mail, right? Sometimes you have the same day pickup or you pull up in the parking spot and someone comes out and brings it to you or you run in there and pick it up from their customer service desk. Sometimes they're leveraging home delivery using some of those gig economy chains, supply chains like Uber and um, uh, what is it for groceries? Instacart and Shipped. 
and you know uber eats and doordash and grubhub and all of these even doordash you may not know you don't just buy food from restaurants through doordash you can actually have groceries delivered from walmart through doordash and there are some other partnerships that have happened more recently some of which were already in the works before the pandemic but certainly once people got to be more homebound and afraid to go out and shop those increased exponentially so it may make you think as a new boutique owner hey i just need to be online right and there are a lot of benefits to be online which we're going to talk about now for one thing it opens up depending on whether you open it up to the united states or to the entire world by shipping or by having people shop internationally it opens your business up to the entire world when you have a physical store it's limited to the people who physically walk in there except in the hybrid cases where people can order online and come in person to pick it up but the bottom line is it's not open to the world generally speaking whereas online anybody who can get to your website could potentially be a customer that is very attractive to a new boutique owner who may be concerned about not reaching hold on i'm already sweating y'all know y'all those of you who watch me you know i sweat like i'm coming off of a drug <laughs> when i'm on these broadcasts um but anyway you you may be concerned as a new boutique owner especially if you don't know how to identify or tap into your target market um, you may be concerned that you're not going to reach enough people to make enough sales right and that's a worthwhile and that's a legitimate concern right um and so you feel like if i open up to if i'm open up to the world which is what online is or at least to the united states and everybody who can access the united states part of the world wide web that gives you a lot more opportunities to sell you also can get new customers so maybe you already had a small customer base but being online allows you to reach people who again are not in your city they're not in your state they're not under your usual sphere of influence these are not friends or family or people who bought from you before so being online opens up a lot more opportunities for you to get those sales transactions it also opens up new ways of selling drop shipping is a really big thing that people are all excited about which means on your website you show items but you never actually have to buy them or touch them somebody else does the work of shipping them to the customer all you have to do is reach the customer and get their money the thing is with drop, sh drop shipping that cuts into your profit margins quite a bit you can imagine the company that's actually creating shipping doing all the fulfillment of your product they're going to get a huge cut of your profits so for those of you this is just kind of a side item for those of you who are um, excited about drop shipping there's nothing wrong with drop shipping just understand that there is a huge price and a huge hit your bottom line takes for the convenience of not having to store inventory not having to ship things out and things of that nature so for most boutique owners they want to have full control over the entire supply chain because the other thing is or the other or the distribution chain because the other thing is if, when they mess up the customer's looking at you right the customer is looking at you and saying why is my stuff not here why is it broken why is it wrong and you never touched it to begin with so now you've got to talk to these people whose company you don't control the drop shipper to figure out what went wrong so there's some upsides and downsides to drop shipping which we can talk about at another time but it does give you some new selling options by being online you also can you know when you're online you might be able to partner with some other businesses who do have a physical presence and you can use them to be kind of your distribution point while you're just selling online there's so many options you can take advantage of by being online which is why it's so attractive and here's the biggest one that gets most people excited is the lower costs you're not paying rent and utilities for a building you're not um, necessarily paying cust um, employees to be in your shop when you can't be there because maybe you're still working your full-time job there is a much lower overhead because most people run their online businesses at least at first from their home so they are if they're selling clothes a couple of clothes are there in their garage or they're there in a closet in their home you're mixing up the products in your kitchen and you're you're packaging them and sending them from there you are already paying rent you are already paying your mortgage so there's a no cost to your business from that standpoint so having an online business can have a lot more lower cost which makes it attractive and then another big thing and one reason why a lot of people are starting a boutique is because you don't want to have a schedule you don't want someone telling you when to come and go you're trying to get away from that situation which is why you're creating this income source so that you can quit your job right so you don't have you know with an online business there's no schedules and you don't have to worry about being open and closed your business is technically open 365 24 7. it's just a matter of when you can fulfill your orders right and if again you're drop shipping 
all the all that's happening is there's a flow through your business and the money just drops into your bank account so those are some very attractive reasons why you might want to have your business online and a lot of people are thinking oh with COVID-19 you know retail stores are going to become a thing of the past you see a lot of malls took huge hits a lot of major chains my favorite store uh, New York and Company which I'm actually wearing some of their clothes right now they actually shut all of their stores down and they are only online now because that uh, they were not prepared for all of their stores to be closed all at one time on one day right or within one week or so and so a lot of retailers that failed during the pandemic and they will never again open their doors right and so it can make a new person like you think well if these major stores we're not able to survive this new online and people aren't coming in the stores landscape that we're in at least last year and earlier this year. That's what it looked like. Things are opening up now. But if those big guys aren't able to survive, what makes me think as a single boutique owner, a new person to the game, I'll be able to afford it or be able to afford the risk and be able to survive. But here's the thing. And here's how I want you to think about it. There's always at least two ways to look at anything. And the way to succeed in business and in life is to be able to find the way to look at a situation that's challenging in such a way that it makes you the winner. You can always, always, always win no matter what the situation is, but you have to have your mentality such that you always look for the opportunity. You can always shift your attitude to an I can, I will, I have, I am type of a mindset. The way to look at the people who failed, the New York and companies and some of those others that have left these huge gaps in the shopping malls and in the places, some of them closed down for good. You know, a lot of these stores, they didn't just go online. They just are gone for good. Is that they left gaps in the marketplace that can be now filled with somebody like you who's coming in already aware of the changes in how people buy. See, those stores like New York and Company, I'll use them as an example. They had a website. And you could buy from there, but let's face it, for those of you who are fans of that store, you know when they had a sale, or even if they didn't have a sale, you love going in there. And if you're like me, you run right back to the clearance section and you buy what it is that you want. You love going in the physical store. I very rarely bought on their website. I would almost hasten to say I never did. I liked going in there and catching the clearance and, and doing that. And so they weren't really prepared for everything to be online. And so when they were shutting down their stores, it got down to those last days they were open. They were selling garments for a dollar a piece, garments that had been 40, 50, 60 dollars a piece. I myself got in on a lot of that. I think that's actually when I bought this outfit I have on now. I was doing that shutdown. Um, and but they weren't prepared for everything to be online. And here's what's true. When you have a huge ship that you are sailing, think Titanic. It's very hard to change course. That's why that ship went down. They saw the iceberg. It was too late to turn the ship. And so the same thing is true of those big stores. They, they had an online presence, but they still had all these stores that they were paying rent. And they had thousands and hundreds of thousands of dollars of inventory sitting in those stores that had to be liquidated. And, and nobody was going in the malls. And it was not, it's not as easy as it sounds to change a strategy, to change a retail um, way of doing things, a way of running your business operations, and you got all these employees that would suddenly lose their business if everything went on, uh, lose their jobs, excuse me, if everything suddenly went online, right? Of course, they have to increase whoever is at their distribution centers, of course, but the people that work in the retail stores in the mall aren't going to work in the place where they ship their online. So it was a lot to it. And a lot of times they were hoping month after month that the pandemic would go away and the stores would reopen. So you had that wait and see time as sales were slipping. See, that's why those stores weren't able to survive. But don't look at their inability to survive as an indication that maybe retail stores are becoming dinosaurs. No, they're not. They are actually coming back stronger than ever. There are opportunities now to have physical stores that weren't there before because maybe rent is cheaper because all of these, see, everything's, you know, connected, right? When the malls fail, when stores fail, um, they stop paying rent, right? Well, the people that own those buildings, that own those strip malls, that own those indoor malls and all those buildings that these stores were in, they still have mortgages, right? They still need tenants. So now they're able to work with a person like you who might not have been able to afford the high rent, but now maybe you can get in there for half the price or less. And now you are already aware of how things are now. Guess what? The curbside 
and all of that way that we're buying now and shopping, it's not going away. Doing business online, having online meetings. I had a, a sales meeting yesterday with for a product I purchased for myself personally. It would have been an in-person meeting years ago because I used to sell that product. Now everything's done on a Zoom. And I bought thousand dollars worth of products right there on Zoom because I was familiar with the product. The thing is, those things aren't going away. What you have to be able to do is adjust your strategy to, uh, you know, to incorporate these new ways that people are doing business. There are some people who are never going to go all the way online just to buy things. Like me, I'm a super online buyer, I'm constantly clicking on ads and buying. But a person like my mother, and it's not just older people. It's younger people don't want to go online. They like to see things in person. They like to touch and feel the things that they're going to buy. Some products are difficult to buy online because they need those touch points. They need that in-person experience. Sometimes the buying process involves things that have to be done online. You have to be able to touch the person or hand the things. Yes, there are creative ways to simulate being in person, but if it really is required to be in person, you cannot substitute for that. If certain people want to buy in person, believe me, that's the way it has to be done. And so you need to be able to adapt your strategy, your plans, your business plan to adopt uh, ways of doing things in this hybrid method, which means, no, don't immediately assume you can't have a physical store if that's what you had planned to have all along. It's more affordable now in a lot of cases. Sometimes not. Sometimes landlords are trying to make up for the money that they lost last year. Every business is by increasing their prices here. But ultimately, if they price themselves out of the market of the tenants that are wanting their spaces, they're still going to sit empty and they're not going to make any money. So they have to be willing to work with you. So if you had dreamed 10 years ago of having a physical boutique where you could serve your customers up front, maybe you sell skincare and you wanted to be able to do facials and and, and, and do a hands-on process or maybe you, you know, have a clothing boutique or want to have a clothing boutique and you were going to involve styling and tailoring and some of these other things that you want to do in person. Don't give up on that. Don't let anybody tell you that retail is going away. I mean, I'm sorry, physical storefronts are going away. They are not. They are changing. We might not have the same huge malls and shopping districts in the same way that we used to. But guess what? Right now, people are craving in-person experiences because of the quarantine. See, again, another way to look at it. Yes, people were afraid for a year and a half. A lot of people still are. A lot of people aren't, though. And a lot of people are willing to take the risk. They're going to put their mask on. They're going to get their vaccine. And they're going into these places, the same places they were afraid to go into with crowds last year. They're crowding into these spaces, these restaurants and these malls and these stores and these tourism attractions and things because they, they now realize how desperately they need that human connection. People are still, they will never stop buying in person. So don't ever believe we're going to go like the Jetsons where everything's virtual and somebody's reaching through the TV and touching you like George Jetson's uh, boss used to do. We're not going there. Yes, we talked about in the beginning, there are statistics showing that online sales are booming, but there are still ways to hybridize your approach. So yes, you're online, but you also have a physical presence. There are the pop-up boutiques. There are trade events. There are shared spaces. There's a spot here in the metropolitan Louisville area that used to be a restaurant and then the original restaurant closed because of COVID. Another space, another restaurant moved into the space, but they also are sharing the front part that used to have tables and chairs and actually somebody's uh, selling furniture out of it. It's kind of odd. You walk in, there's couches and chairs and then you go to the back and you can order like a biscuit. And It's a vegan restaurant. You would order like a vegan biscuit and gravy and it's just like, okay. That's interesting. They're sharing rent. People are doing creative things now they weren't doing before because they didn't have to. You too can do the same thing. There's no reason why you can't share a space with somebody. There's no reason why you can't do many things. But the dinosaurs, meaning becoming extinct, the statistics I'm reading, the reports I'm reading, absolutely not. People often are more loyal to businesses they can go in in person. I still don't want food delivered here to my house. First of all, not every restaurant that I want to eat at can be delivered, but more importantly, I like to go chat with the people there, feel the vibe of the restaurant. Even if I take it to go, I like to be in that space. And more often than not, I want to eat in that space. That means 
restaurant delivery is not just going to replace physical restaurants. That's not going to happen. We have just gone through the worst, uh, well, depending on how you look at it, one of the worst times in human history as far as something that created fear around the globe. And we're coming out of it gradually, slowly but surely, going a little few steps up, a couple back, you know, like this. But the bottom line is we have survived this and people are now um, still wanting that human connection. People are crowding back into churches in some cases and malls and restaurants and all these things. Retail has changed forever. Some things will never go away. They probably will never get rid of curbside because what's not great about that? You buy it online, somebody brings it out to you, you can keep your lazy butt in the car. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Well, sometimes you are being lazy. Sometimes people aren't mobile, right? People don't have good mobility. It's a good option. So what you have to do, instead of thinking that storefronts are the dinosaurs and they're extinct, think of them as a hybridized model that's going to get you in front of people you're never going to reach online. Online often is a great way to reach people who are nowhere near you. But the people who are in your community, I know we have a couple of pop-up retail spaces specifically for Black-owned entrepreneurs that they are open on Saturdays in our community. And those places are flooded with people who want to come and touch and feel. When I'm buying certain things, I want to feel it. You can't feel the quality on the screen. Just know if you had a dream for a storefront, don't give up on that dream. Just recognize you're going to have to change your approach. You're going to have to do things differently. You're going to have to do your staffing of your store differently. Ah, I said staffing. You mean to tell me you were still thinking about doing it by yourself? There should be a training back in somewhere earlier back in my list of videos about needing staffing. I need to do that one again. You need help. You need help, but you need to be where the people are. And the people are out and about. Now, if you want to have an online only store because that's the model that appeals to you, that's fine. But I don't want you giving up on your dream of having a physical store where you can meet your people, let them feel your vibe and touch and, and agree, touch and agree and help them in that way. Don't give up on that dream because of what has happened. Even though the numbers are increasing with online sales, physical stores are still being leveraged on the fulfillment end. Like I said, curbside. And, um, you know, there's other things. Sometimes you want to be able to um, return things in person, right? So I love shopping on Amazon, but here's one thing I really love. If I need to return something, I can just walk it into Kohl's department store, give them the item loose. I ain't got to put it in a box. They will return it. They give me a tracking number. I'm done. Now, if you don't live near Kohl's, that's not available. You also, But those that are near one, that's an awesome option. Kohl's is making themselves relevant just like Facebook made themselves relevant at a time when they could have faded away by using their single sign on. So now when you join other websites, you can use your Facebook profile to, to sign in. That was genius. And things like Kohl's, right, being a place where Amazon online can be, um, can, you can do returns there. That's genius because that makes them continue to be relevant and necessary. Not everybody wants to return stuff through the mail. You see what I'm saying? Just know that there are opportunities in physical stores just like there are online. The numbers may have shifted, but when I tell you people are still needing a place to go to shop, to get out of the house. Nobody wants to stay in the house forever, right? Most people don't. There are some people that love it. Most people don't. And so retail physical stores are here to stay even if some of the big dogs failed and some of the smaller dogs. But guess what? That opened up spaces for you. That opened up leasing options for you. That opened up spaces that might have all been full. And now they're empty because everybody failed, unfortunately for them. But that can create opportunities for you to move in and open up your shop. However, you do not want to just blindly go out and rent a retail space. We talk about that all the time, just throwing money at your business. I'm going to go out here and I'm going to just rent this space and put some stuff in and hope for the best. You should not be renting a space until you have done weeks of prep, weeks or months of preparatory work and knowing where your business is going and preparing and pricing and marketing and customer attraction and you know all of these things go in you should not just run out and rent a space because i just told you it's still a good idea it's not a good idea if you're not ready it's not a good idea if you have not um, used a step-by-step -step approach to planning for your business i'm not listening to and trust me when i tell you i'm not listening to any of those people to tell you you can start a business for 50 bucks and you don't have to plan 
Not if you want your business to be around 10, 20 years from now. Not if you want to be able to replace your seventy, eighty thousand dollar job and work for yourself. Not if you want to be able to create a legacy for your kids. Not if you want to be able to take care of your parents and set up college funds. You're not going to be able to do that with some rinky dink thing that you just throw together. You need to be strategic about what you do as you prepare your business for success before you start throwing money into inventory, throwing money into rent, throwing money into a website, throwing money here and there. You need to know if you're making the right spending decisions for your business. And if you would like help with making making the decision about online versus physical or a hybridized approach and how you should be spending your money in the early days of your business, what you should be doing way before you start buying inventory. It always hurts me when I hear people say, I went out and bought inventory and now I'm wondering why I'm not making money. If that's the first thing you did, you got a tax ID and bought some stuff, no wonder you're not making money. You missed out on 500 things you should have done before that. And if you want help creating a boutique that is a real business, not some old ham scam, side gig, hobby gig, selling out of the trunk of your car. Maybe you make $300 a month. Maybe you don't. If you want a real business that's going to allow you the freedom, flexibility, and income that you want to create the lifestyle that you would like to have, then I invite you to reach out to me right now at melaniehunter.com forward slash chat and book your free breakthrough interview with me to see if we're fit to work together to help you to get to the place where your boutique is launched. It's making money. It's drawing customers and it's going to be there for the long haul where you will know how to adjust your style in the moment when challenges happen like COVID-19. You see, there's businesses that did not struggle or they might have, well, they might have thought they were struggling at the beginning, but they were able to pivot quickly and and be online and still interface and make their money. And they were able to gobble up a lot of the market share while everybody else was around waiting on people to come back to the stores or waiting on people to do this or that. And so it doesn't have to be that you will, the next big crisis doesn't have to take you under either, but you have to have a plan. You have to have guidance to get you to the place where you know how to set up a business the right way, not some ham scam that's going to have you struggling every other month. Again, book your free breakthrough call with me. I'm a nice lady <laughs> and I'm here to help you get some clarity on what it is that you want to do, what it is that you want to have and the quickest and most profitable way to get there. But it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen by doing it yourself because if it was, you probably would be out there spending your millions and you wouldn't be sitting here watching this, right? It's not going to happen if you just figure it, if you just keep reading websites, eventually you're going to figure it out. It's no easier to start a business than it is to get a college education. You needed professors, textbooks, tutors, classrooms, and all of that to get that college education. Put the same energy into a business that's going to allow you the six or seven figure lifestyle that you want. But it starts with a decision to take it seriously and step out of your comfort zone. Put that fear to the side, book that call with me and let's get you on the right path. So you don't have to be as fearful. The fear never goes away, but you don't have to live in constant fear because you know you will be doing the right things for your business at the right time in the right way and not just throwing money at your business and watching it go down the drain. So again, Melanie with two L's, hunter.com forward slash chat. Book your call right now. Fill out the application that pops up after you book your call so we can get you the best value out of our time together. And let's have a conversation. It's been my joy to share with you today. I look forward to speaking with you next week again on another transformational boutique startup topic. But in the meantime, if you need help, book a call. If you don't, best wishes on whatever it is that you are working on. You guys have a great rest of your week, an awesome weekend, and we will chat soon. Bye-bye.